There's just going to be like kind of stuff in the background, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I hear like beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's going off. Uh, it's the, fine. Yeah, hey, let's, uh, let's just start this. Hey, welcome to Snackdown. I'm Justin and this is... Andy. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> no one was surprised, I don't think. What, that, that it I'm here? You. Oh, I don't know. I mean, people were... Oh, I don't know if I told you this. Can I tell you a quick story before we even sure. get going? So one of my old coworkers, I saw her at some point and I go, hey, you said you listened to the podcast, right? And she was like, yeah, I did. She's like, and then you weren't on the podcast anymore. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, like first of the month or first of the year, it was, you know, your co-host and a different uh, uh, host. And I'm like, the one with Joel? And she's like, yeah, I guess so. And I'm like, and you don't listen anymore? And she's like, no, because you're not on the podcast. And I'm like... That was like that was like a one minute bit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's hilarious. It was just yeah, it was funny. I set her straight, so hopefully she's listening, Meg. So yeah. So what the heck are we doing today, Justin? So today was a tough one. So <laughs> as everyone knows, we're kind of doing this remote and we're both kind of stuck inside. And we're finding that the food episodes are gonna be a little bit harder to like tie up what we're doing and to actually get stuff. So it took a little bit to kind of figure out what we were doing. We had talked a little bit off the pod about biscuits and things, and I'd, mm. I've never really, like, I'm not a, much of a baker. <laughs> I haven't, I've, <laughs> we'll get into that, but I have not baked very much at all. Maybe, like, once I baked brownies when I was a kid, but that's about it. Like from the box? Yeah, I think so. Oh, <laughs> so I'm not much of a baker, and I don't have a lot of baking utensils. You don't need a lot. Um, yeah, I don't need a lot. Anyways, but Andy was telling me about these great biscuits that we should make, and so that's what we kind of did to start off with. So these are based on the red lobster cheddar garlic biscuits. It's the cheesy garlic biscuits, yeah. Cheesy garlic biscuits, yeah. So I don't know if it's the official one or if it's like as close as you can get. Uh, this was like probably the disgruntled employee who left Red Lobster and then like posted stuff online. But yeah. if you if you look up like ABC News uh, Red Lobster biscuits, you can find the recipe. Now, I you know, I think there's some advantages and disadvantages to recording remotely i think one of the advantages is maybe that people can do whatever we're doing like they've got a much higher chance of having set ingredients or whatever to be able to like replicate what we're doing so that's that's an advantage i think you know our our drinks episode last week you know if you're gonna make a cocktail you're gonna have lemon you're gonna have lime hopefully and then uh and then the week before that i mean it was a little more prep work but you can smoke salmon you can smoke cheese by yourself with minimum ingredients and uh tools that you can easily order online i think the other fun thing about doing this remotely is yours and mine what we're eating is different so we kind of like see how the other does it and how it comes out Mm because both of our drinks were different and i'm sure these biscuits are going to be different what does your biscuit look like hold up a biscuit also as a disclaimer andy didn't make his own biscuits okay Okay. Kaylin did. So I think mine I were was in too long. That's what mine looked like. Because mine are a little bit more brown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is there, bacon in those? <laughs> They're very brown. Yeah, you kind of just want to crisp them up, like make them like a little golden, like a couple of brown peaks, but not, not I mean, all yeah, brown. Yeah, put it in for the suggested time. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And ovens, you know, ovens vary. Um, well, let's try them. Yeah, let's try them. Now, did you add the butter... And garlic thing over top. Mm-hmm. I don't have a brush though, so I just kind of took a spoon and scooped some out and poured it on top. Yeah, that's it's basically the, basically the same thing I thought. Mm-hmm. These are good. I don't think they're as moist as yours probably are because mm-hmm. they're a little overdone. That and um, Kellen was adding butter like to the initial part, and it was essentially mm-hmm. like asking for a half a stick of butter. And she and I were talking, and then she goes, "Whoops." I'm like, what? And she's like, I added three quarters of a stick of butter instead of a half. I'm like, oh dear. I guess they're just gonna be that much more delicious. <laughs> These are really good, though. Mm -hmm. And so I never heard of this before. And Andy was telling me about it. And so does the recipe of using frozen butter and kind of grating it into the flour into like little beads and then mixing that up. What does that do differently? So you get like little, um, you said frozen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's frozen butter, it kind of stays intact a little better. And you get these like little pearls of butter. So those are going to stay intact until until you're baking. And then they kind of liquefy and then they just absorb in. It's a little flakier. And then you get these like little butter pockets too. So uh, yeah, that's what it does. Yeah. So what is in this? So we used, did you use like a Bisquick mix or did you make your own? I don't know, man. Kayla made them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the recipe calls for just using a Bisquick mix. I think she used a Bisquick. And then, you know, you use butter. There's a little bit of garlic powder. There's a little bit of parsley flakes in mm-hmm. the butter mixture that you put on top of it when it's done. And then there's like cheddar cheese. It's a pretty easy recipe. 
The hardest thing I had was the mixing part. So after you mix the butter and the flour together, Mm -hmm. you pour in the milk and the cheese and you mix that. And you're supposed Mm -hmm. to mix it with your hands. Yeah. It gets really sticky. It's so sticky. I swear I could take my hands out of the bowl and there would have been nothing in the bowl. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was just all on my hands. So getting that into a ball form onto my baking pan was a huge pain because it says to use an ice cream scoop, which I don't have. So I just used a quarter cup scoop, like a measuring cup. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And so I scooped it out, but then like I couldn't get it out of the cup. So then I used my finger. Or a fork. And then it was on my finger. And then (laughs) it was a whole thing. There was a whole bit to it. It looked horrible on my baking pan, and I was like, well, this was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> and then I pulled them out of the oven, and I'm like, oh, these look pretty good. So are you pleasantly surprised? Are you... See, so it's not a failure. It's... I think it's a success. If I had put it in just a little bit last time, mm-hmm. like a minute or two, perfect. I think they would be like perfect. Because they look <clears throat> good, and like the parts that aren't too brown look yeah. just right. And the flavor is there. Like the flavor, I mean, it's a pretty simple recipe. So, do you have you have the ingredients to to do this again, like another batch or two? Yeah, I could do I could do it again. Dude, you should. Yeah. So at first, I thought, like I said, I never bake. So this is kind of one of my first solo baking experiences without <laughs> mom there to hold my hand. Um, <laughs> Mom's so the best. Then, when I uh, saw it on the baking pan, I was like, "Well, <laughs> that was a failed attempt," and uh, no, I think it actually turned out pretty good. So what else would you put on a biscuit like this? Because normally you could add like jelly or something like that. Honey. It's such a savory. Really? Honey? Uh, I wouldn't add it on this one in particular. But yeah, I mean, in terms of a regular like buttermilk biscuit, I would totally do honey. Well, yeah. Honey or like you usually would add something sweet to a buttermilk biscuit. Yeah. This one's already jazzed up enough. I think you could do, you could probably do like an Old Bay, you know, seasoning. I think that would mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, I wonder if you could dip this in something. Uh, probably more butter. Or, or, <laughs> or maybe like... Um, Maybe you could add like an aioli to it or like a, oh, yeah. like an aioli spread. I was actually uh, going to make some aioli sauce this week. Ooh. What, what, uh, so it's, it's mayo, right? And then what? Yeah. What so I have like that? this, I have like this packet of aioli seasoning sauce or whatever. And you just kind of use uh, Greek yogurt and mayo. And then oh, nice. of, it just kind of makes the sauce. I love aioli. Uh, it just doesn't love me. And, but I'm. Every time I like pull it out, that packet, I'm like, I'm going to make some. So then I pull out the mayo and I don't have the Greek yogurt. So uh, finally, the last time I went to the grocery store, I got Greek yogurt, and then I pulled the mayo out, and there wasn't, it was like almost empty. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> but now I have both, so mm-hmm. I can finally make it. How long will it keep for? The sauce? I don't know. Maybe like a week in the fridge. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably not that. Kind of yeah. broke the seal on that. And yeah. That sounds good, though. So you have to have a lot of, if you're only one person like me, you have to have a lot of aioli-based meals. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and dessert. Yeah. <laughs> what's in that cocktail aioli <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> actually no that would go kind of like with an egg white sort of uh no that's disgusting eh, no, can i tell you so i made a um i made a cocktail last night and mm-hmm. i you know, you know like, i like to diverge from the path and yeah. uh so i had uh like a mezcal which i wasn't i like mezcal in general but i'm not really impressed with this kind but i just wanted to use it you know so i i did so mezcal, I did a little bit of sea salt, I did a little bit of agave syrup, and I stirred that all together, and then I added like one or two drops of truff sauce. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was not good. I had to toss it. <laughs> it was bad, so. Yeah, I can't, like, I really like the truff sauce, but I can't imagine it in a drink. It's not like the same as like a Tabasco or a Cayenne. I could see it in a Bloody Mary, honestly. Yeah, I, I guess I could see that. Or like a Clamato type drink. Mm-hmm. Have you ever well, had when a- we did... No, I haven't. A Caesar? A no. Like a Caesar drink? No, I don't know what that is. A lot of our northern friends are cringing right now. It's a mm-hmm. it's a Canadian-based drink. I feel oh. like we've talked about it before, but it's got clam juice and tomato juice in it. Oh, um, we should do that sometime. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of uh, a little more... I don't know if it's necessarily a, a Canadian thing specifically, but it's definitely like a northern mm-hmm. port sort of thing. So Interesting. But like we when we did the margarita with the Tabasco sauce... Mm-hmm. The Tabasco kind of just added a heat, but not flavor too much. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like the truff, it, you know, it's going to lend to that truff flavor. Yeah. And not, so so gotta, much, and not so much the heat. Not as much. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, so when was the last time you went to Red Lobster? It's probably been like five years at least. When was the last time you went? A long time ago. Yeah. Like more, more than five years? I actually probably I would, more than five years. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say more than. Yeah. It's been at it's least. Not, it's been at least five years. Probably. It's not closer the place to I think think of when i want seafood i guess no completely not but the biscuits are great the biscuits are I mean, great when anyone talks about red lobster it's not like oh the lobster there is like divine it's yeah. always the cheddar 
biscuits. <laughs> yeah. And aren't, aren't they free? Don't they just keep loading you up on them? Yeah, they just keep bringing them. And it's such an exotic thing to bring. Usually it's like a, a thing of bread or chips or whatever, wherever mm-hmm. you are. But like these cheddar biscuits. Popcorn are and like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you can make your own and you don't ever have to think about going to Red Lobster again. So we got a mattress today. We got a cocoon by Sealy. It's, you know, it's one of those like box ones and it comes in and you poke a hole in it and then it starts inflating and everything. And oh, yeah. Yeah. So the boys, uh, they're like, they're like in love with the box. They're like, oh, you know, like a box comes in like this is box season for the kids. And so it was like the perfect shape. So we just turned it into a uh, rocket ship. We like cut holes for nice. the kids and like a door and everything. And it was, it's very like commercial. Uh, like kid experience. Yeah, like something yeah. you'd see in like a commercial. <laughs> yeah. With some like dumb, like crappy indie music playing too. Mm-hmm. And then it's about like jeans or something like, like that. Something that like, doesn't. And, and like the music's playing. It's like ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Hey! Remember? <laughs> just all yeah, that. Like mon- Monsters of Men. <laughs> or just anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we were all wearing matching pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I was just wearing jeans and it was like, hey, you're a pretty cool dad and you're wearing jeans. Levi's jeans. And that's it. As and comfortable as pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> it's as comfortable as pajamas in a cardboard rocket ship. And it's like, oh, it's a very <laughs> specific feeling. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what have you been up to? Not much. I pulled out... Oh, this is kind of a funny story. Well, I pulled out... So I have one of those straps that you can like wear your harmonica with when you play the guitar. <laughs> And uh, so I pulled that out and I was playing harmonica and guitar. And then I remembered the story back when I had that in my house. I was playing my harmonica just w- with my hands. And then I had to carry some stuff downstairs. Mm-hmm. So I put it in my mouth and then I had like an armful of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I tripped and fell down the stairs. <laughs> and I was just laughing so hard because the sound of falling... With, with the harmonica in your mouth, it was like a cartoon sound effect. And as it like knocked out, it was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It's just like <laughs> as I'm like falling down. The... <laughs> so, what do your neighbors think of the whole Bob Dylan thing going on right now? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. I like, I was playing and I was had the harmonica and my acoustic guitar, and then I like stopped. And I'm like, they could probably all hear me right now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And I was kind of singing. I started singing in a Bob Dylan voice just because. You're like, look at this photograph. <laughs> Every time I do it, it makes me laugh. <laughs> like that. Nice. To Nickelback songs, too. <laughs> Cooking up some cheddar biscuits. <laughs> yeah. ABCnews.com recipe. <laughs> mm, child. I don't know. He doesn't say child. Never mind. No. So have you ever made drop biscuits? Those are drop biscuits. These are considered drop biscuits? I'd say so because you just kind of drop them on. <laughs> well, any time I looked up a drop biscuit recipe, it would have some sort of baking implement, like baking soda or baking powder. Oh. And uh, when I was looking up drop biscuits to make, I don't actually have any sort of baking soda or powder. I do now because I bought some when I was at the grocery store, but... I mean, these look like drop biscuits. They do look like drop biscuits. So, okay, here's where you might have gone wrong. If you're using Bisquick, Bisquick mm-hmm. already has baking powder and lard oh. in it. So that's what the difference is. That's the difference. So oh. if you found if you found a Bisquick drop biscuit recipe, it would look pretty much the same. Yeah, so I wasn't looking at Bisquick. So the other recipes I was looking at called for flour and baking powder or whatever. Yep. Or baking yep. soda. Oh, interesting. You're getting there, man. Baking is like a whole different world. I am not... I don't know anything about baking. Um, I am good at like grilling and cooking on the stovetop and all that. But then baking is like... Pff, I don't know. I've, I've learned a lot from Kalen. I default to her, like, or if there's like something that's delicious, she loves baking too. So I'll be like, all right, I'm on the kids. If you want to bake, go nuts. And she's like, I would love to bake. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, um, that's certainly a pride point for her. She makes the most amazing pie crust. We're going to definitely do a pie episode soon. Just flaky, just goodness. So I was looking up, I looked up a quick bisquick, (laughs) quick bisquick, uh, recipe for drop biscuits. Mm -hmm. And all it calls for is bisquick mix and milk. That's it. Wow. And you and That's you're cool. even dropping it onto an ungreased cookie sheet. So yeah. Yeah, and I was worried, so I use an ungreased cookie sheet, obviously, because that's what it calls for. And I was yeah. afraid of sticking because it happens a lot. But these didn't really stick at all. That's the butter. The there butter was a did little that. bit of like residue and that then the, stuck on and some, then the lard. But yeah. Yeah. It uh they didn't stick at all. The bottoms are a little my over did mine, but I mean it's a, <laughs> it, well it's a quick, you know, it's like it's not like you're cooking them for a half an hour. It's like pretty much ten minutes tops. You did probably like twelve minutes or thirteen. Seven, uh, oh, no, no, no. It was like, it's like 15 to 17, right? 15 to 17, so I did 16. So in baking, 
I would always mm-hmm. anticipate the middle point, but I would go like mm-hmm. a minute or a couple minutes before they're even like on the early yeah. side just to check them. So I always go way on the early side when I'm just heating something frozen up. Mm-hmm. It's but still because frozen. I've never and baked. Like, Yum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not used to baking, I'm like, all right, this isn't like heating up a frozen dinner. Yeah. This is different. So I kind of like went in the middle because I didn't want the middle to be gooey or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you going to make these again in yeah, the I think coming so. weeks? They're really easy. Yeah. And they're addictive. They're delicious. They're I, very delicious. I crushed like three of them within the first five minutes of us talking. And <laughs> really? Now I'm, now I'm I think of... mine are bigger than yours. Excuse me? <laughs> I think mine are bigger than yours. Uh, there's no there's no way to tell. You want to get a ruler? You want to get another biscuit and get a ruler? Hold one up to your head. We have different size heads though. <laughs> Do we? Let's just get a ruler, okay? <laughs> a ruler? Okay, well, let's measure our biscuits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back. back. <laughs> so, what was the verdict? What do you mean? How you, you already long? measured yours and came back? Yeah, I measured. I did uh, three or four of them to get a good. Um, oh my gosh, you idea. like averaged them? Yeah, Nerd. they were put... all about the same. So, like three and a half inches? Yeah, mine are three and a half inches. Three and a half by one and a half, or one and three fourths. They're tall. What? Oh, dude. Like, oh, you're talking about the height? So, no, like and for the long. one and three quarters. Th- this way was three and a half, but are yours long and flat, like cookies? <laughs> like cookie boys? <laughs> So I, I was measuring them using my iPhone app, and uh, so it's here. I'll send it to you. It looks ridiculous. You used your iPhone to measure the entire biscuit? Yeah, dude. Just chill. Just look at it. <laughs> yeah, so we made them out the same exact biscuits. That's crazy. Let's rewind to Justin going. I think my biscuits are bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I think of... mine are bigger than yours. Excuse me. I think mine are bigger than yours. <laughs> I would win at the county fair. <laughs> My biscuits bring all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> These are like borderline gooey, which is exactly how I want them to be. Yeah, so you still mine are like borderline and very dry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we just knocked out the heart attack episode too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did heart attack and he did yummy <laughs> Chesapeake Bay bagels. <laughs> bagels? <laughs> Biscuit Boys. Biscuit Boys. Next week on Biscuit Boys. I could totally do a Biscuit Boys podcast. Biscuit Boys? We, yeah, we would have third season. We have heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, these are so good. Look, so you, you see that? You see the flakiness on the inside? Is yours like quite that much? or No, not quite. So when I did the grating of the frozen butter, it looked more like shredded cheese. Like they were like long little strips. Okay. And in the, according to the recipe, they should be like pea-sized. Mm-hmm. But my shredder, the, the setting that I did on my cheese grater, it just ended up looking like almost the same as the cheddar cheese shreds that I put in. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. So you had little balls? No, I, I typically would do the exact same thing that you did. Okay. Kalen got this like like this weird uh, p- uh, pastry like kneading device. It looks like a, uh, a weapon of sorts. Uh, it was so good. I just like that butter and good. carbs, you know what I mean? I know. You ever had butter soup? No, that sounds amazing. You're not talking about <laughs> butter know. squash soup, are you? <laughs> no, I was just saying butter soup, which is just a bowl of butter. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> a- you perked up, though. Your face was like, can butter I- soup? <laughs> can I have butter squash soup? Hold the squash. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm getting kind of thirsty, Justin. <laughs> cool. What could we possibly do about the thirst? I don't know. What, what are we going to do again? Sorry. Yeah, so now that we're done these bagels... Why do I keep saying bagels? <laughs> now that we're done these biscuits, we're going to move on to a drink, and it's going to be Red Lobster themed. So this next drink is called a Rock Lobster. Do 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 Rock Lobster. <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> a Rock Lobster. Okay, we're done. And so uh, we can get into that drink when we come back, and we will maybe go into the history of lobsters. What? <laughs> then we're uh, going into the natural history of lobsters? Yeah, why not? No. Well, we'll be uh, back with a refreshing, cool drink. You can meet us down at the port, and we'll have some fresh rock lobster for you. How's you can that? pick Pretty out good? your own lobster for your drink. <laughs> I want mine to have a little more bite to it. No, they don't really <laughs> bite. Um, uh, pin- pinch? A pinch. No. A pin- I want mine to have a little more pinch to it. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Can I have some pints of rock lobster? No, they only come in pinces. <laughs> <laughs> Large pints or a small pints? Um, okay. See you All right. Bit. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> And we're, we're back. back. On, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta work on the timing. So this was like the worst drink recipe I think we've ever used. What do you Did mean? You experience this? It was just like add everything and then. Well, float no, it. but it was like a dash. Two things were a dash, oh, and okay. then it floated one fourth ounce of rum, which is barely enough to like. It's just enough float. to like get a little bit of a taste at the at the beginning and get a little smell. Yeah, I think Did that's yours fine. Do this weird layering thing though. Nay. You see this? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Not so bad. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's like a weird layered. It's like a. It's got a very lobstery color, right? Yeah. Do you it's like very... mine? Does mine look pretty good? Yeah, it looks. Yours looks good. It Cheers. looks like it's kind of got like a crown. Yeah. So we'll take a sip, we'll take a little drink, and then we'll uh, tell you what's in this thing. It's very, it is very lobster colored. Not like the exterior, but like lobster meat colored. No, not it's the not. red. Yeah. <laughs> you know what lobster meat looks like? White with a little hint of pink. No pink. <laughs> it's got no pink. Kellen just texted me and said, it tastes like a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty good. Which hits the spot right now. This really does t- hit the spot. So this is coconut rum is the major ingredient in it. And then you've got half a banana and you've got... There's banana liqueur. Banana orange, liqueur. Orange juice. A but dash. Then there's, a, there's a dash of orange juice and a dash of pineapple juice. So I don't know what that meant. So I just put a half ounce of each in because I was like, whatever. That's a dash to me. There was like a tip section in the bottom and um, oh, I'm getting brain freeze. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, and there's a cup of ice. It's a frozen drink, in case you yeah, yeah. are wondering. Yeah, there was a tip section. And it was like, if you want it sweeter, add more grenadine, and if you want it punchier or, or like more tropical, add more mm-hmm. pineapple juice. So interesting. I almost put in my pomegranate liqueur instead of the grenadine, but mm. I decided not to. So it asked for a banana liqueur, and instead of adding banana liqueur, which I don't have, I added another quarter of a banana and then mm. like a quarter of an ounce of vodka. I figured that counted. That right? kind of makes sense, yeah. But it's good. It's very good. And I and then once you've blended it all, you float it with a little bit of dark rum on the top. And you used spice dark rum, correct? Uh, yeah, I used uh, Kraken. And I so. used gold rum, which I believe is dark rum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like either like silver or gold. I think it's kind mm-hmm. of the similar similar thing with like the tequila. Yeah, it's just not spiced. This is fantastic, actually. Yeah. We didn't have to go to Red Lobster, but we got our tropical drinks. I mean, now I just kind of want to do a seafood boil right now. Yeah. So and, I'm going to... And play on a beach. Go a little a crazy here. In Espanol. All right, go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip my cheesy garlic biscuit into my rock lobster sweet frozen drink. Uh, no. That's a very strange flavor combo. <laughs> 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 Who would have thought garlic powder and <laughs> banana? banana. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't I, horrible though. I could see maybe like a curry sort of thing, you know, if if the cheesy garlic had some curry in it. But I don't know about garlic. This drink is fantastic. It reminds me a little bit of a pina colada, mm-hmm. only instead of uh, the frozen pineapple chunks, it's it's more banana y instead of pineapple. Yeah, and I I think the grenadine adds a nice little hint of fruit that's not islandy you know what i mean because a lot of the drinks we've had are very pineapple banana orange and the grenadine adds a little bit of that pomegranate flavor andy is like dealing with a major brain freeze (laughs) oh god (laughs) so so i went out on my birthday you know i did the mall hop we never talked about the we never like got back to that and i went to margaritaville Uh uh-huh and uh I was like, I have to get a margarita because we talked about it. And what's great is we, since we've done all these cocktails from looking at the menu, I could tell which margaritas were better than others because some used a margarita mix Mm -hmm. and some you could use tequila, simple syrup, you know, triple sec, lime. And I'm like, oh, so that one's from scrap, from scratch. (laughs) From from table scrap. That one's from kitchen scraps. No. (laughs) That one's from scratch, and this one is using a mix. So I was like, All right, I'm going to make sure I pick one that has that's used from scratch. And then mm-hmm. I got a frozen margarita. 
It was so good. I had the, the scratch <laughs> like immediately got a brain freeze because I was just like, oh, the frozen just, one. Yeah, I was just like drinking that too fast because I'm like, this is so good. So the the consistency of that is the same as a wine slushy. It's a very very fine ice. Yeah. And I don't think I can make that on my blender. This is fine. This is very fine. Really? Mine is always comes out very like mine's like I, smoothie. Mine's smoothie. Always smoothie. Can I um can I tell you the medical term for a brain freeze? Yeah. Cold neuralgia or sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. <laughs> I would love to I can't pronounce that, I don't remember, but I would love to yell that out like ah, ah my sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. <laughs> Exactly. Why does it hurt me so? <laughs> Blast you, Margarita. No. So it's a survival reflex. So they're you know obviously your vessels are constricting. So it's just this big blood vessel constriction. And so after the squeeze, they open up quickly. So mm-hmm. it's the rebound dilation that sends a pain signal to the brain. It says what Doctor, does your body think is happening dude, when you I don't know. like to protect itself from uh, cold? Just cold. Maybe it thinks like more is coming. <laughs> Maybe. It is a horrible pain though. It's just it's an insane pain that I can't imagine going on for longer than a brain freeze amount of time. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you get nailed by a brain freeze, act fast. If possible, remo- remove the cold food or drink from your mouth and press your tongue or thumb against the roof of your mouth. So you're basically just trying to make as much I've, contact with something warm as possible. I've heard that and it's never worked. Yeah, I don't you know, I don't think it's necessarily like a pressure thing. I think it's just getting as much warmth. It says drinking warm water can help too. Typically when I have a brain freeze, I have no source of warm water. You know, that'd be interesting to induce a brain Do you want to try that? Can I induce a brain freeze and then have some warm water? You want to try that? I'd have no? to like chug it. Yeah, let's I mean, try no, it. No, no, I can do it. Yeah. Or you can do it too. Do you have extra? I have like a little in my glass. It's not very cold though. Mine's pretty melty. Let me uh, hold on a second. I'll be right you back. Yeah, some warm water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Science experiment. Um, All right. Professor Andy's here now with the science <laughs> experiment. Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Eh. <laughs> did it work? Like, did you get a brain freeze? Uh, it was mild. It was very mild. Ugh, bummer. Yeah, because it probably wasn't as cold as it was when we first started. But I didn't get a brain freeze that long ago. It wasn't when it was, like, so fresh and so cold, you know? So, mm-hmm. bummer. Well... I don't have any advice for anyone. I mean, like, maybe just kind of do, like, a little hot-cold thing. Yeah, I've heard the rub your tongue on the top of your mouth, and I always try that. I'm like, I'm rubbing, I'm rubbing, and it it never works. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, because it... it where it hurts is like definitely in the soft palate, like in the way back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that's where it hurts the most. It doesn't necessarily hurt like right there on the hard palate where it's easily yeah. accessible by your tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, my sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. <laughs> well, that was good. Nerds. And uh, not very <laughs> good to dip the biscuit in, but. No. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited for you to dip into uh, baking. Yeah. And we should do some more baking episodes. What What's your favorite thing to bake? Uh, I usually, it's a teamwork thing, typically. Uh, pretzels, they're super easy. And we'll definitely have to do pretzels in a in an episode coming up. Yeah. But I, I can honestly say I don't I don't bake super often. I know some of the basics. But then again, I, I screw up on like the art of like, not art, but like adding enough flour or adding a, a reasonable amount of flour. You're not supposed to pack it. Like you're not supposed to pack the flour into the, into the cup, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I feel like baking. It's easy to screw up. Mm-hmm. Like the limits of like good and bad are smaller when you're baking. The, yeah, like the, I you mean, can the, over bake something easily. You can under bake. You can add a little bit too less flour. You can. It's like I don't know. It's not the, as forgiving. The units of measurement are like so dynamic. I wouldn't say it's it's not like subjective, but like you have to have. It's all consistency based. So like especially mm-hmm. with flour and then like you know different different types of milk but i mean like when you when you get everything added even if you're so consistent with the flour it might look a little different it's not going to be the right consistency and then you gotta add a little bit more of this and then add a little bit more of that and pray that you haven't added 10 ingredients by that point uh so that you have to like compensate as you go up so yeah i i give high respect to people who bake professionally Mm -hmm. i hear making a crust is a very hard thing to do. Hard to master, and yeah. And when you have someone that can make a good crust, it's like outstanding. Kaylin, I'm not That's kidding. That's what I hear. She, we're going um, to have a pie episode, but I'm not going to get any of it. I'm just going to be watching Andy eat pie like, at home. Num, num. Yeah. Who's a hungry boy? <laughs> Look at this <laughs> pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be wearing like a beater too and just like, yeah. just getting like blueberry and like cherry all over my shirt. Yeah, your and, like, your whole mouth daisy. is just... <laughs> 
<laughs> Your whole mouth is just covered. She made so much pie. It's so good. <laughs> Fresh out the oven. Oop. Who's got room for ice cream? Me do. Me do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, looks great. This is you're like, <laughs> you went to McDonald's and you just got like a baked pie from McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is pretty good too. <laughs> Actually, they are pretty good. They're fine in a uh, in like a fast pinch. food way. You know, like yeah, sometimes yeah, you yeah, want yeah. that fast food burger, even though it's not like an elegant burger. It's no. the burger that you want, the cheap burger. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about those pies. Sometimes you just want like a cheap hot apple pie. Uh, have you been craving anything? Have I been craving anything? No, not really. I was craving smoked salmon, so I went to Wegmans and got some smoked salmon, and it did not compare to your smoked salmon. And That's... it had the same reason why I don't like store-bought beef jerky. It was a lot more moist and wet. Uh, yeah. And, and I like your, I like the more dry taste. And I, that might be for preservation. What, that it's moist and wet? Yeah. I, I think it really has to do with the brining process. Really? Because it was very slimy and wet, and like I feel like it attracted, I really liked the texture of your salmon Mm -hmm. so it wasn't as good um so i also when i was at wegman's because you know i'm stocking up for so i don't have to go back in a while yeah i saw some i was looking for like snacks and i saw some pickled herring which i had never got before Mm. i was like i'll try some pickled herring because they're right next to the grillo's pickles and uh oh man dude i i'm craving grillo's pickles to be honest (laughs) yeah the pickled herring is very good i never had it before it's very oniony that like there's huge chunks of onion all over it I um, mean, it's a little bit more like sweet, but it's very, it's like, you know, it's got that fishy taste where there's the herring, it, onion, vinegar. It's just in a jar though. It's uh-huh. not a. Yeah. It's right next to the grillos. Is it cooked or is it? It doesn't look cooked. It's like It just cold. says salmon. Yeah. Or herring, not salmon. <laughs> You're like, it was weird because it tasted like herring and not salmon. <laughs> yeah. Pickled herring ingredient, salmon, <laughs> onions, vinegar. <laughs> uh, have you ever had like uh, smoked oysters or clam or smoked clams? Like yeah, I just had some, in a can, I had some smoked oysters, not too long after we did the oyster episode. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty good. I like them so much. They are very uh, pungent. So I've been, oh, I've been told to go into a different room. <laughs> one of the snacks I like is uh, squid, so canned squid. Have you ever had that? No, I haven't. It's in like the international like Goya section. Is it soft? And is it like really like nice and, or is it Yeah, chewy? so it's like, you can get it in, uh, it's, it's, it's nice in between. It's not soft like a fish. But it's not like chewy like a clam would be. Yeah. Cool. Um, That's and awesome. And it's good. And you can get it in like oil or you can get it in like some hot, hotter oil. Mm-hmm. And I usually get it in the hot oil and it is delicious. Look, if you ever if you ever pick up something that you really, really like, pick up another one. <laughs> okay. And we'll do like a, we'll do like a rendezvous. Not Special rendezvous. Special snacks. Yeah. Like a little trade off. I'll give you, I'll get you a five pound thing of Haribo gummy bears. This episode <laughs> is sponsored by Haribo. <laughs> Nothing but the best for Mama's boy. Every Mama's week I show baby up. Locks, Haribo, Mama, da, da, da. <laughs> every week I show up with like all these interesting weird snacks. And every week Andy um, hands me off their gummy bears. Another handful of gummy bears for the boy. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still true to the name. <laughs> Just like Grandma made Haribo. <laughs> uh, so spiny lobsters, also known as langustas, <laughs> langoust. Or rock lobsters <laughs> do, 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 do. are a family of about sixty species of achillet crustaceans. Okay, that's it. Spiny lobsters are also, especially in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, South Africa, and the Bahamas, called crayfish, sea crayfish, or crawfish. That doesn't seem right. What crawfish? That a lobster is also called a crayfish because crayfish are very small. That's well, I think some at all. The closest living relatives of clawed lobsters are the reef lobsters and the three families of freshwater crayfish. Okay. Okay. So is a spiny or rock lobster different than the rock than the lobster you would eat at like Maine? Well, a clawed lobster is not that closely related to spiny lobsters or slipper lobsters, which have no claws. <laughs> what are you looking at? Wikipedia, what are you looking at? <laughs> Did you say slipper lobsters? Slipper lobsters. Huh, that's cool. They look like uh, not a slipper that I'd want to wear, but they look more like a slipper than a lobster. <laughs> what are you eating? A slipper. <laughs> yeah. They kind of look leathery, honestly. I want to eat co- one just because just I want to say, this tastes like a slipper. Well, it is it is edible and highly regarded as food, but is now rare over much of its range due to overfishing. So people like it. Uh, of course. People like eating their slippers. Flip-flop lobster. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. Croc lobster. <laughs> Ni- oh, dude. Nice. 
Uh, you know what I've found? So I've got relatively flat feet, and yeah. you wouldn't think of Crocs as having like a good pronounced arch to them, mm-hmm. but they do. And I think I keep bruising the arch of my flat foot on Crocs. Really? <laughs> The croc bruise. (laughs) Yeah, it's awful. And it's like very painful. And I'm like, I kept thinking that I had like a plantar fasciitis sort of thing. And I think I'm just bruising them on my freaking crocs. (laughs) Uh, You should just give them up, Andy. Excuse me? I will never. (laughs) Uh, I might, honestly. I can't, I can't, uh, I'm not going to limp around just because my crocs, you know? You have big bruises and welts and everything. And people are like, take the crocs off. You can't. Yeah. They're now a part of me. Yeah, I wish I could find something that was like a little, or maybe I'll take like a, uh, like sand them down and then like recoat them. I don't even know what they're coated with. So do you wear like socks with your Crocs? You a sock uh, croc guy? Uh, if it's cold out, yeah. Because yeah. I wonder if the sock would help no. the bruising. No. So Could you stop. add orthopedics into your Crocs? <laughs> uh, maybe. It'd have to be like a full like inch and a half like lift and then like nothing in the middle and then another yeah. like inch and a half lift. Thank God there's like a lot of like room in the toe of the Crocs. So what do you think about this drink? I think it was really good. Dude, that's a keeper. Um, yeah. I don't always have orange juice in my uh, uh, in my fridge, so mm-hmm. that might be tough. But we always have but pineapple I mean, juice. It only called for a dash anyway. A dash. So yeah. like what? What is a dash? I asked what Alexa. I asked Alexa what a dash meant, and she went into the price point of what a dash is, and I don't know what she was talking about. And I was like, stop. <laughs> Stop talking. (laughs) Alexa, but I'm not done yet. Yeah. So according to Google, a dash is one eighth teaspoon. Oh, that's insane. And I was like, I am not putting one drop of orange juice and pineapple juice in this. So I just put it at half ounce. Yeah. (laughs) Probably probably a good call. Yeah. It was uh, it was good, though. I mean, really, I don't think um, I don't think that would kill the drink if I took out the orange juice. Yeah, like I could put more orange juice in, more banana, more pineapple juice. I think it's very, like it's going to taste good no matter what you put in there, really. We honestly have a, uh, a I have a much higher likelihood of actually having oranges or mandarins or clementines mm-hmm. than actual orange juice just in the fridge. Yeah. So if if I really wanted to, I could just kind of put it in like a lemon squeezer or whatever and uh, yeah. and just kind of squeeze it out. Yeah, honestly, like a dash would be just like squeezing a little bit of orange in, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's so, kind of cool. But it was good. It was really good. It was very banana heavy, which I liked. And then, yeah, and um, I liked the grenadine added with the banana. Like that mm-hmm. was a good mix. Mm-hmm. So make it, guys. I don't think there's a ton of stuff that was like crazy. The banana liqueur, like you could totally do without. Just yeah, because An- Andy did it without. Yep. So I just added a little more banana to it, and it uh, it probably tasted even better. To be honest, it didn't taste like a uh, a runts banana. But <laughs> unless you like runts. Yeah. If you <laughs> runts don't, are then. delicious. They are for some. Cool. Well, that was a good episode, I think. And um, the biscuits, I think my first attempt baking alone went pretty well. I think I just need to put them in for less time. What would be like your next? So say do that. I would say do that until you nail it, right? Mm-hmm. And then do it yeah. a couple more times. Yeah, I think I'm going to try like a standard drop biscuit, like we said, mm-hmm. just because I want something that I can just throw some, and milk. some, yeah, some jelly on because this I'm not going to put jelly or no. jam on. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of yeah, want something dude, I can have honey. like in the morning, you know, something a little like biscuit with a little bit of sweet if you have honey yeah get honey i actually have some local honey so it's cool well yeah i'm I'm glad we're still able to get together we might be able to have i mean you know when the weather gets a little nicer another socially distanced beer at some point yeah we can do a campfire episode only from very far away (laughs) (laughs) yeah with a really big fire (laughs) with barely any mic bleed yeah yeah well, we have to have the um, fire ban off first, so that would be in May. It's true. Yeah, so like we said, food is getting kind of tough, so we'll, we're going to try to keep doing what we can do. But hopefully, you, um, hopefully you're hopefully you able to kind of partake with us. Um, if you haven't already made a drop biscuit, if you're a terrible baker or if you don't bake at all, if you have, <laughs> if you have bad credit or no credit at all... Um, <laughs> Definitely, um, definitely give it a try. Cause yeah, I mean, I am horrible at baking, and cooking kind of stresses me out sometimes. And I was able to make them. So yeah, if you have an oven that goes to four hundred, if you have milk, and if you have Bisquick and fifteen minutes of your time, uh, maybe like thirty minutes total, then you too can have delicious biscuits. Yeah, I mean this this recipe you probably could put in for thirteen or fourteen minutes, and it only took me like five minutes. Maybe five to ten minutes of oh, prep, prep time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah. just half an hour of your time to make some delicious biscuits. Mm-hmm. Go for yeah, it. I, Try I, it. I th- yeah, I think people that otherwise like baked goods 
and aren't able to get out to get too many baked goods right now, uh, this is a really good option. So Yeah. And while it's baking in the oven, you can blend up a rock lobster. You totally can. And have a and very, very lobster, easy. biscuity-based meal. I wouldn't say the two blend super well. They're only uh, tied I together bet, by name. I bet if you dipped a regular drop biscuit in that drink, that would be really good. Maybe still not. Uh, maybe so. <laughs> I think if, so. If, maybe if you add like, a little bit of sugar to the um, biscuit, it can kind of be like a little more of like a shortbread-y sort of thing. Yeah. Because I think the biscuit part went well with the drink. I think the garlic and the parsley was what threw it off. Yeah, I agree. I <laughs> yeah. agree. Parsley was subtle, but yeah, yeah, definitely the garlic. And the like salty and the cheese. butter. And the cheese, too. Cheese, right? cheese, you can't forget yeah. the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> kind of all of it, sort of. Um, uh, well, yeah, get, give it a whirl. If you try it, uh, hit us up on your Instagram or other Take social. a picture of it, measure it. And see if it yeah, uh, measure measures it. up to ours. <laughs> yeah. See, we want to we want to know. So I measured mine with the iPhone app and was able to take a picture of it. So check out our Instagram too, because um, if yours measures over three and a half inches, you may have the, the biggest bigger biscuit. biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and if um, if you just make it straight with flour, uh, but if you don't add uh, baking powder, then you may end up with a limp biscuit. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's a good one. Was it? Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool, 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 cool. All right, <laughs> All right well, thanks, guys. <laughs> we appreciate you hanging out. And take care of yourselves. And, and each, each other. other. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening today. You follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can find this episode on Others Like It on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, YouTube, and a bunch of other places. And you can go to our website at www.snackdownpod.com. And you can give us a call, leave us a voice message, tell us a suggestion, tell us a cool story, whatever you want. Our number is 315-313-5456. He's right. He's right, guys. Uh, That's it. So, uh, so hang in there. We love you. Yep. Thanks for... We're, we really appreciate talking to you guys every week. Yeah. We are coming up on our year of being on air so we're excited about that and if you have one of the biggest ways of giving back is um finance no just kidding one of the biggest <laughs> one of the biggest ways of getting giving back is uh just telling someone about the podcast yeah i mean right now we don't have any sort of patreon or anything like that so if you want to support us just tell someone that that means a lot to us every time every mm-hmm. time we hear about a new uh listener or so um and continued listeners uh that that is really boosting in our hearts and mm-hmm. in our uh, souls. Can I tell you a very quick story? Yeah. Okay. So my brother posted a picture on our group, our family chat, and it was a bunch of people flying kites, like mm-hmm. adults, and they were all kind of flying like the similar brand of kites. And so I, I, I went on a rabbit hole of like Googling stuff. And uh, I was like, man, like, you know, every little uh, hobby and stuff like that, everyone has like their own little like nomenclature and like little like slang or whatever and um i was looking up like the kite flying uh terminology or whatever and it included like kite slang Mm -hmm. and um it was like types of flying and like one of it was like free flying (laughs) and was like it's where someone's doing really cool tricks but it's stable and all this other (laughs) stuff and then like the other one (laughs) there is another type called soul flying and it was like where you're flying here actually let me read it real quick because i can't i don't think i'm going to be able to do it justice soul flying uh this term is referring to a style of stunt kite flying where you express yourself freely with your kite whether to music or to silence precision or full-on tricks you are in effect flying your heart via your kite (laughs) (laughs) seems like kind of a soul flying (laughs) talk about wearing your heart on your kite am i right (laughs) Yeah. Isn't that great, though? That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, just like little like industry or hobby terms. Um, well, once this is all over, Andy, and we can hang out again, let's go soul kiting. <laughs> soul flying. Come on. Soul man. flying. Yeah. <laughs> and our yeah. hearts can fly together. <laughs> to, and we can we can listen in silence or to a snack down episode. <laughs> we just listen to ourselves <laughs> while flying our kites. Yeah, yeah. And so. expressing ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're bored, get your kites out <laughs> and fly your hearts into the sky. We'll All talk right. to you later. <laughs> we'll bye. see you guys next week. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>